All right. So uh, as in Frank's keynote, you all might probably know uh, Nextcloud Text, and I will give like a quick overview, maybe a bit more technical uh, look on it, uh, what what we did. Uh, as you've seen, it's like it's collaborative text editing. It has a focus on simplicity, so we try to only like offer formatting that is like really useful to most of the people. Um, we use an open format. We use Markdown uh, as the basic file format, uh, but we don't expose it to the user interface. So the editing is basically what you see is what you get, but the resulting file is Markdown. Um, we also have support for plain text editing, like you can edit source code files with syntax highlighting, also collaboratively, and we also support resolving conflicts. So if someone still uses the um, desktop client to edit a file and saves it, you will see a nice uh, screen. Um, as you can see, like this is the text app as we all have seen it in the in the demo before. Um, this is the conflict resolution. On the left side, we have the um, file version from the currently open in the web browser user session. And uh, on the right side, we have the version that got overwritten by the desktop client in that case. Um, yeah, we didn't start writing from scratch, but we um, based the code on, on two libraries, basically. Uh, one is TipTap, and TipTap uses ProseMirror. Uh, ProseMirror is basically a framework for building rich text editors uh, in JavaScript, and it comes with nice, um, yeah, like a like a nice feature set. All these uh, collaboration features come with ProseMirror, so we don't need to um, do much implementation on the client side there. And also, they they are used by several other companies, like uh, GitLab is uh, using it, Atlassian, I think. Um, so this is like the the whole document internally is uh, a, a tree format. Uh, you can always like pass it to JSON. Uh, you have a base document, and then you can have different notes under it. In that case, a paragraph um, where there's a text note inserted, and there's this other type that is a mark, which can basically apply any styling on the note. Uh, so in in that case, we have the text inserted, as you can see in the uh, second line from below, and it basically gets marked as bold. Um, collaboration also uses this uh, JSON-based format, so um, uh, every change is basically a transformation of the of the document that gets synced to the server. Then, and the the nice thing is that uh, the server doesn't need to take care about um, uh, applying chain, uh, changes and uh, resolving conflicts, that is all done on the client side. Um, right, and uh, at the moment we do smart polling because, as you might know, Nextcloud is running PHP and there's no real way to have like a, a background task running that has a, uh, opens a web, so a web socket, for example. So we do like regular polling to the server, which is backed by memory cache, so we don't... We, uh, gain some like a pretty nice performance, um, but yeah, you could also, of course, um, at a later point for for high performance setups, uh, have a separate WebSocket process that is running. Um, yeah, this is like the basic uh, how conflicts are resolved. So the uh, client sends his uh, latest changes to the server. And if the client isn't based on the on the on the on the most recent version, the server will just deny accepting those, and the client needs to rebase those changes. Um, so just a quick overview: like we we started the text step, but we still have um, plenty of features that would be nice to be implemented in the future, like uh, different formatting options, of course, all with Markdown as a basis, and um, like inserting images could still need some improvements and um, we also want to bring rich editing to other apps so if you like for example have uh, the notes app which also uses uh, markdown you could also uh, like in the future you should be able to also use the text app for editing those files 
And of course, mobile editing, similar to like we do it with Collabora. Um, you open the, the file right from your Next.app app and start editing. And as usual, uh, text is fully open source. Uh, it's on GitHub. We have plenty of good first issues, so if anyone wants to start contributing, there are like easy issues with uh, predefined steps if you want to uh, start helping us implementing something or fixing something. Feel free to check that out. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hello, my name is Tobias. I'm the um, uh, developer of the Nextcloud Android Files app, and I want to show you the next steps on the Android development over the next year. But first, let us step one back, a year back, and see what we did last year. In the background, you see the active uh, installations count, um, and on the black line, it's just the uh, time or the date of the event. So in uh, September, we released a 3.3 uh, version with a major um, highlight of trash bin support. Next was the 3.4 with the um, action on the notification, so you could uh, accept or deny, for example, a login. Um, or you could edit uh, text or um, spreadsheets directly via uh, Collabora log, uh, online. With uh, 3.5.0, we um, integrated the possibility to, to um, take an image and directly upload it to a certain folder and also changed the uploading uh, system so that it's on a mobile uh, uh, connection it was using one um, megabyte chunks and on a Wi-Fi um, connection it was using uh, 10 megabyte chunks. Um, on uh, March this year we reached the goal of 300,000 active installations and as you can see we uh, uh, yeah, shorten our um, cycle for 100,000 active installations, and we will soon reach uh, 400,000 active installations. 3.6.0 um, was introduced with a new storage path uh, chooser for local files, so you could directly jump to your picture uh, folder or to your camera folder or new movies or music. Also, you could see uh, show uh, notes uh, when you shared a file. Another big um, yeah, milestone we reached on uh, June this year. We had uh, active 100 unique active um, contributor on uh, GitHub. So this is very, very, very cool, and I'm really excited about it because this means that it's not only a one-man or a, a Nextcloud uh, GBH-driven project, but it's really a community-driven um, project. Uh, the last uh, release was um, 3.7.0 with a Chromebook support, at, uh, as uh, Frank already mentioned at the keynote. And today, uh, exactly this morning, we released 3.8.0 with the UTF support and the remote vibe for Nextcloud uh, 17. So, what are the plans for the um, next uh, step for the 4.x version? We want to change the um, internal network library because right now it's rather old and we want to sh change it uh, and use the uh, DAF uh, library by DAF X5. Uh, if needed, we want to exchange that and uh, then implement uh, the missing features upstream so we will not fork it but really uh, want to uh, collaborate in an open source meaning. So also there will then be the new uh, Android library called uh, 2.x and we will maintain our old uh, currently used library for two years so that uh, enough time is uh, given for people to uh, switch. Also we want to change the internal caching system. Currently it's a uh, yeah, self-made implementation and we want to re rely on Clyde which is just a major and a good adopted uh, library. Uh, on the obvious side, we want to go away from the um, system of uh, Google Account Manager because it makes problems with uh, external storage um, when the app is there installed or also when you have a work profile available. A long-wished feature is also the two-way uh, sync uh, to have a certain folder totally uh, in sync, um, but this is something we cannot do right now because first we need server-side support for, his, for it. Also, we want to change the new structure system using Kotlin and a new um, model system to have a better testability. 
And last but not least, least uh, there are long-wished and often mentioned dark uh, theme support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And as mentioned, all this uh, will not be possible without the help of the community. And here to name the five most uh, users that helped us last year. Andy, who did most of the UI, UI and UX changes. Uh, Chris, who did the Dagger implementation and the new uh, logging system. David, who implemented last year the single sign uh, system and enhances this year. RFD did um, most of the test cases and... As you see, so uh, Dano X uh, did, uh, did the dark theme system. So, yeah, maybe you want to join us, and maybe then you will be mentioned next year here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm here to talk about uh, why you know the next cloud, the self cloud for better privacy. So, some uh, words about me. I am Gilma, I am French. I have a blog where I speak about in French. I have a Twitter. I am a member of Pharmasoft, the Google Eyes Internet. I'm a free software user since uh, many years. I do self hosting with Voyunost. And uh, I pretty say I'm an Nextcloud user, maybe a kind of evangelist. Why I'm here? I'm here to talk about why you know host. Why you know host, it's an operating system built to decentralize internet. It's the operating system used in um, the internet cubes. Maybe you have about that. It's a kind of Omutu for self-hosting if I would like uh, to introduce you why you know host. You need, um, if you need more information, you can go on the website. Well, you know, some features of our view, it's Debian-based, it's uh, simple on the web administration interface, you uh, can uh, add uh, some apps by just clicking on the web interface, there is uh, SSO supports, uh, backup, let's encrypt integration, firewall, file to one, all you need to do self-hosting, and uh, it's, uh, uh, um, it's cool. You can find some information about why you know, architecture if you need, it's documented. What does it look like? When you know, this is the why you know the default login interface. You can customize it. You have, a, you, have you have just to login. There is no two uh, authentication factor yet. Uh, after you are connected, this is the user interface. Each um, blocks represent an app you can uh, choose. There is a part for administration interface. It's a uh, Graphics, you have different uh, parts, and uh, all the new things you need to do uh, you, uh, for administration, you can do it basically with a web uh, interface. All the things you do with a web interface are available with command line interface. It's, uh, the graphical interface is just a uh, UI for the, all the command lines. So if you are an administrator system who likes uh, um, command lines, you can do it. When you know apps, Apps are packages. Uh, they, um, it's, uh, there is um, a standard for uh, how you package an app to make it work on Wynohost. It's also documented. Well, so, Nextcloud and Wynohost. Install uh, Nextcloud in few clicks. Uh, Nextcloud is packaged as uh, other apps. So, in background, it's a shell script where you have all the steps step by steps to make uh, the way you know the next load works on the way you know it. So um, when I need to learn how to install a web app, I check first if there is an way you know apps and I know how to install these apps because it's uh, well documented, it's a shell script. You can uh, use a graphical installation. So you search for next load, you click on install, you have some uh, field to uh, answer where you want to uh, put it on the um, subdomain, the main uh, users. And after you have a new apps, you click on next, next load works. Interested, convinced, you can deploy a one for yourself, tell your friends organize in Soul Party, give us some feedback on the UX. You can contribute to the codes from the back end, from the uh, front end. Uh, you, have, um, you can do some documentation, supports in the forums. Thanks for your attention. So, hello, my name is Fanny Dimu, and I will tell you a beginner story about my Google Summer of Code experience. A few things about me. I am a junior software engineer coming from Greece. I have just graduated from the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering in Athens, 
I am the creator of Secure Willy. Hold on to this, I will explain it in a second. And guess what? I have successfully completed Google Summer of Code this summer. So, the project I worked on was NextCloud Pi. Uh, NextCloud Pi is a ready to use solution for NextCloud where everything is pre installed and pre configured. Uh, and although it's a great job, there are still some features that are missing. So, my job was to spot these features and do my best to fill the gaps. My mentors have been Padelis Arados and Stathis Yosifidis, both active members of the Greek community of Nextcloud, and also of the books, Nacho, who is the main developer of Nextcloud Pi, and had been giving me really useful coding tips. Okay, so why did I choose a Nextcloud-related project? Because it's cool, and I use it for my personal data, and also because I have used it in the past as a benchmark for Secure Willy. Secure Willy is an open source software that I created, which automatically produces subarmor profiles for Docker containers. Briefly, I picked a Docker Compose file of Nextcloud, and I produced an subarmor profile for the server and one for the database service. Okay, and let's see what I did in Google Summer of Code. First of all, I adapted Nextcloud Pi to, the, to continuous integration. Um, I used Travis in order to build images for uh, its architecture, the Docker images, do some tests, and push the images to Docker Hub. This automates the whole process and saves time, and it also provides transparency of the building phase to users. Next, I created an automation tool which asks for a minimum input and gives a ready to use a virtual machine on virtual box. And it also provides an option for easy cloning of an existing NCP VM. This makes a beginner's life easier as it does not require any technical skills at all. Um, another automation tool which uh, creates a distributed system of NCP Docker containers where the data storage is replicated uh, over all nodes. I use Docker Swarm and ClusterFS. It provides high availability and data persistence meaning that if your machine crashes, then you still have access to your Nextcloud Pi data via another machine of the system. Uh, another task I worked on was uncivilizing Nextcloud Pi server. Uh, I had to convert every single bus script of NCP server into Ansible play playbooks. This work is still in progress, though. Uh, it sounded like a good idea because many IT people are using Ansible, and it's also easier to learn than bus for non-programmers and lowers the barrier for future developers. Lastly, I helped Nacho with the update system where I implemented the mechanism for backward updates, and I have also written some blog posts about each feature I created, which you can find on my blog, and some of them are also posted at on your bits. Uh, some of the existing features can still be improved and expanded, like Ansible or Travis CI for board images, and there are several new ideas that I intend to work on in the future. If you want to learn more about my work, you can see my contact details. That's all. Thank you. A very non-technical presentation will follow now. Um, I work at the German Federal Youth Council, and we um, actually... Nextcloud is just a part of our work supporting organizations in their digital transformation. I just wanted to present you a bit to understand what use cases are for nonprofit organizations. Um, traditional file sharing and groupware, that's very uh, obvious. Uh, then we have one bigger project. It's actually 60 organizations, 60 organizations. They are monitoring political and physical attacks uh, against NGOs, especially with the raise of uh, the right-wing party IFD that has increased dramatically. And so we have an anonymous letter inbox in, in Nextcloud. We have tagging and, and like support mechanisms there. Uh, then another like a very typical thing is they are using Nextcloud plus Collabora for a time logging because uh, the administration forces us to use Excel sheets. So that's the easiest way to, to use Collabora. Um, youth organizations or other well, youth welfare organizations don't start with zero. They usually have a lot of tools running. That's like, that's the usual, like the, the things they use. And each of these are replaced by Nextcloud now which is quite uh, impressive, I think. Um, there's two symbols you can see without a name. That's the surveys, because um, 
uh, we are not fully convinced yet about uh, forms, but uh, I know that it will improve. Um, so the pre-next cloud problems in organizations were that obviously in so many different tools, each activist has to, to find his or her uh, own set of tools. And the overview get, just gets, gets lost, who has access to what, uh, if people leave, so where, where is the data? Then uh, organizations like mine have offices, of course, like empl employed people, but also non-employed people, volunteers. And uh, if there's a monoculture of whatever, Microsoft Office or whatever, it's very easy for them, but uh, it's very difficult for volunteers. License fees, we actually had a problem that um, one of our member organizations lost all of their contacts, like address books, because they didn't pay the license fees, because sometimes they just forgot. So their, their whole um, like contact is gone. Uh, that will not happen with uh, Nextcloud. And also um, uh, the separation of private and professional life. It's just, I, I leave the office and I just switch off whatever the, the chat. Uh, but with Nextcloud, we came across several of new challenges. <clears throat> First of all, people are totally confused, like what is a group? There's user groups, there's the circles, there's the contact groups in the address book. And that's the, because we use the XMPP extension, uh, there's also X XMPP groups, and people really, really have trouble to understand that. Then the next thing is uh, sharing, the logic of sharing, uh, and like uh, inheriting uh, the, the, the rights of, of documents. And also they are totally confused if they are allowed to move a folder or if it changes it with your colleagues. And like this is really something that leads a lot, a lot of explanation at the moment. Mm. Then we realized people, like many organizations, are really moving their whole structured infrastructure to Nextcloud. But uh, if you had a file server of two terabytes and people start just using their, their sync client, suddenly their, their notebook is just full and they realize, oh, maybe we shouldn't have synced everything. Um, then the simultaneous use of apps is not consistent at the moment. Um, for example, text is really cool because people can work together on like other apps, for example, I think DEC and so on. Um, you can just work each person after, like another, like, what's English word? Like separately. And uh, that's also confusing to people. For Collabora, we realized, I mean, people love it, but uh, to understand which fonts are available because the server has fonts, but you have fonts on your computer and included fonts, it's really difficult for some, for people. Also, uh, because it's not consistent, in Collabora you can just close a document and it's not saved. And it's just gone. And people don't expect that because text, for example, uh, saves automatically. And end-to-end -end encryption is uh, a big challenge for people to understand. I think this is the most important slide here. Um, something that you should know. If, especially youth organizations and many non-profit organizations get a lot of public funding, and that makes it difficult to contribute to, to uh, open source software, which is really strange, because uh, funding cannot be donated. So, for example, we can switch to LibreOffice, but we cannot donate to the project. So we have to pay something. We have to get an invoice for something. Then we can do it. And then the other thing is the 50 user support gap. It's it seems as if there is nobody who has like offers support for below 50 users. And uh, because many organizations have like 20 people in the in secretariat and some volunteers, they are always under 50 regular users. And um, Microsoft makes it much easier to just pay and then think they have a support. Thanks for listening. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Marie. Um, you probably know me from when I used to work at Nextcloud. Um, now I'm an event manager and program manager at Prototype Fund, which we're, go we're going to present to you today. Yeah, my name is Thomas. I'm also programming manager uh, from Prototype Fund. It's also part of an NGO, so this is another non-tech part um, of these lightning talks. So the Prototype Fund is um, a project, a part of the Open Knowledge Foundation in uh, Germany. And we want to support development of uh, software ideas. And we have uh, four focal points uh, we want to support, which is uh, civic tech, data literacy, security, and software infrastructure. In short, um, with Prototype Fund, we want uh, fund common 
good oriented uh, software develop development or um, we want to promote open source uh, projects that add value to the whole society. The, the prototype fund itself is funded by the Federal Ministry uh, of Education and Research. And with the prototype fund, we want to deny another way to distribute money uh, rather than uh, giving large amounts of money to large organizations. We want to give small amounts to individuals and small groups. Uh, we evalu evaluate what we are doing and want to share our results um, that, uh, on, and our exper experiences that um, we find many imitators and multipliers. So, in numbers, um, we are now in. Uh, we are now waiting for applications until September for our round seven. And up so far, you see the numbers: how many projects we funded, and and everything else. Uh, funding period uh, lasts six months, and you get uh, uh, forty-seven five hundred um, euros. Uh, so the focal points we want to support is civic tech. Uh, with civic tech, we want to provide uh, digital tools for every citizen. In security, we want to support pri privacy, secure communication, and data economy. With uh, data literacy or data competence, we want to make everyone being able to use and analyze open data sets. And uh, with software infrastructure, we want to empower groups and individuals to um, operate their own applications and networks. So um, we're here because we think Nextel is really interesting. Nextel projects are really interesting for us to fund. And we are actually already have funded one. Um, it's called Undo from Ransomware. It was presented in the Lightning Talks uh, at the conference last year. It's basically a tool to get back in time if your computer gets infected with ransomware um, based on Nextcloud. Um, our round this time is called Engineering Trust Vertrauen Bauen. Um, the applications are open until September 30th. And basically, with Engineering Trust, we mean everything related to trust. Uh, think about trust in information with, for example, journalism or social media. Um, trust in communication with secure messengers and other encrypted apps. Uh, things tr our trust in government and businesses with everything, all tools for transparency and accountability. Things about trust between people, between people and their devices, between citizens and institutions, and literally any trust link that you can think of that can be helped with tech um, we're interested in. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't apply with anything else. Like we're open to anything also not related to trust. Um, this focus just means that we're like particularly happy to have projects about trust, but literally any open source projects is welcome. Um, we, if your um, application, if your project is open source, it's innovative and it fits in one of the categories that Thomas uh, listed before. Then um, you should apply if you need the money. If you're considering applying tips, um, just your, use very clear language. Uh, make sure that you make clear wh why we need it, what it's about, and how you're going to do it. And communicate over about um, how innovative your project is, because the jury will look at that. On that note, we're looking forward to your applications. Um, and we're here a bit for the rest of the day, at least a few hours. And then tomorrow again to answer your questions or shoot us an email. Thank you. So hello again. Now I'm going to talk about uh, why the Open Source Center by Atos is developing a business model around Nextcloud. So who I am? You have already seen me uh, as Genma. It's not my twin, it's already me. Uh, and uh, now I'm as Jerome, working for Atos, and um, as a project manager, architect, and open source specialist. So Atos, it's the corporate part. It's why I am here during my work time. 
So it's a French company, multinational international technology services and consulting company. Our, our, our headquarters is in Beson in France, and we are specialized in different services, cloud, big data, cybersecurity, and services. And uh, Atos operates worldwide under different uh, uh, marks, Atos, Atos Intel, Atos Consulting. Okay. You can check the Wikipedia pages, if you know. What is the AOAC? Atos Open Source Center is where I work. It's a center of expertise and support for open source software. Red Hat and community. We are Red Hat partner, but there is, uh, I am actually developing the part for community open source software. No. We are diff offering different offers and services, consulting, advice and expertise, supports. We do supports from big company for uh, ministry in France. Uh, the kind of supports you can uh, expect, bug correction, outline with a help desk. Uh, you can ask us uh, to correct some software and after we release the patch to the community. Um, what else? Um, there, uh, we have a DevOps factory. We are working to build open source software from the source uh, faster to provide our customer um, some um, uh, new software patch. And after, uh, uh, before we released the patch, and it's integrated in the main branch in the uh, source code of uh, the website, uh, of, um, of the software. And uh, we are working on digital transformation with uh, microservices architect architecture, YAS, PaaS, CAS, uh, cloud, private, and public, public. So I ask myself, why Atos and S Cloud? Okay. So why the open source center by Atos is developing a business model around Next Cloud? As I said before, no, now I'm an open source specialist and above all, an excluder. I'm very proud to use Nextcloud. I really believe, and I know it's true, that Nextcloud is a response to the GAFAM. It's why I'm a member of Pharmasoft or against Chinese Cloud. And I think I'm not the only one. You are here, so you are already convinced. Nextcloud popularity increased. In the end of August, there is a big announcement. The French Ministry of Interior is now pre preparing a rollout of a production-ready Nextcloud to their users, designed to scale to the uh, 300,000 uh, 300, people of the ministry. So why Atos? As I say, Atos is a very big and large company. We have many thousands of collaborators from all expertise. We are able to respond to all the customer needs. It's the corporate parts, but it's true. And what we plan to do with Nextcloud? Just to do what we do with open source software. We are convinced to you, we are convinced our customer to use Nextcloud as an alternative for their cloud needs. We are Google Cloud's partner, Microsoft partners, and I want to develop a third way with Nextcloud and other free software. Install, what we can do, we can install them Nextcloud on their, in, uh, on their own infrastructure or, or on our infrastructure, because we are a cloud, pro pro cloud provider, we can provide them supports. So let's create a Nextcloud offer for our customer. Benefits for Nextcloud on Nextcloud community, most customers and users, and it's cool. Bug reports, it's really important for me to do some big reports and to uh, sensibilize the um, our customers to do some bug reports. Contributions. Maybe we can ask our customer to pay for new apps that we will release under free software license for the Nextcloud community. Exist, uh, doing some improvement uh, on existing apps. So next, we need to find customers to have money. money uh, we uh, need to finish to construct the offer, to communicate about it. It's the first communication, uh, official communication we do about it. We are searching some, for some partnership with Nextcloud, with Collabora, with Only Office. So during the coffee break, we are going to talk with, uh, with you. We are, we are planning to uh, do a meetup in, in Paris. Uh, my plan is to organize a meetup to talk about uh, Nextcloud, maybe uh, to uh, do a bug, uh, uh, a bug um, a correction party. We'll see. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, I'm Ulf. I already talked this morning about the integration. Now some more details. I will 
Okay, I have about 10 charts. The first six or seven are a little bit more about our product. So you understand or some foundation about the product is important to understand how Nextcloud fits into it and then the value of our customer base. Yeah, I talked this morning about um, the acceptance criteria that are typical supercomputers that are our heritage. The largest system that we deployed is 250 petabytes. There are about 25 racks with storage, and then there are a couple of hundreds or thousand nodes where the file system is mounted. Yeah, you can think about Spectrum Scale as the file system that is overspanning all these nodes. There's an agent running on each node, and we provide very fast access. Yeah, similar to NFS, like a distributed file system, but super fast. Yeah, that we had this morning. Um, so scalable performance is one piece, but when you run the storage at that scale, then you also need automated data management. We have, for instance, placement and movement policies. Yeah, if you think about Nextcloud, you have maybe smaller documents like um, a Word or a PDF. You can have large movies. And with the placement policies, you can integrate um, flash and spinning disk, for instance, in one file system. And based on the ending, the movies would go to, to, SS, um, to, to spinning disk and the other one to the faster, more expensive storage. If you don't see it from the user perspective, it's always the same path. And we do, we do it underneath. And if all the time gets older, we can also automatically move data from um, from SSD or flash to to the spinning disk, yeah, under the knees, so your users and even on the next cloud level, you don't see it. Yeah, so data management is important for that. Yeah, and and we also developed one new feature that is the notification, and that is where we have the the, the integration with this next yeah this next cloud. So here that is. Um, we provide one file system and different access methods. Yeah, users can access via POSIX and the agent, but also via NFS, SMB, or via object, or if we have uh, Nextcloud running on it, the same data can also access via Nextcloud. Yeah, so there's no data copying, nothing is in one file system, and then you have the different access methods. Um, that is the environment. Yeah, so we have. Um, um, uh, storage nodes providing the storage, the compute nodes where the analyzer of the data is running, access nodes, and then Nextcloud would be installed as a utility node or utility node for additional service. Yeah, in Nextcloud, yeah, we, we integrate it um, spectrum scale um, as external storage. Yeah, so local file system. And um, in in the past, then there you run. Yeah, defaults every 15 minutes. They go scan for updates. And for file systems at that scale, a traversal of the file systems just takes too long. Yeah, so that was the past. And now the integration uh, is about, we have a new feature um, that was introduced in our latest release that is called, called um, Clustered Watch. And this Clustered Watch, we, we have um, an agent or on all nodes. The changes are sent to a Kafka. Yeah, that Kafka is internal in Spectrum Scale, and from there we push out the, the messages to an external Kafka. Yeah, that you would need to provide to, to to get it out. That is the tooling that we have in Spectrum Scale. In, in Nextcloud, on the other hand, yeah, there you have um, Redis for mem caching, and we have. Um, a small example script to convert the Kafka messages into um, into entries in Redis, yeah. And from there is a plugin in available that that reads the Redis events and then updates the in Nextcloud the the file system view, yeah. And in that way you can have at large scale or in large deployments changes in the file system outside Nextcloud and get real time updates. Yeah, in the file system view, and then you think about um, the workflow that we heard this morning. 
Yeah, we can on our side ingest the data from from some instruments, do the analysis, yeah, that um, put the result in Nextcloud, and then you get an email with a link into Nextcloud to your workgroup. Here, here are the results or the rendered image is available at, at that link. Yeah, I have a GitHub project ongoing um, with um, Ansible scripts and so on to uh, to document it end to end. That's still private because my colleague has it running, but it's not working on my system. <laughs> so um, I have it running that the events appear in Redis. I see that um, the next cloud agent is pulling out and removing the events, but I don't see the updates in um, in the view. So once I have this fixed, then this project will get public, and you can see how this is running and integrated end to end. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Aysa. So I am going to present Tycoon Weaver. Is is now? <laughs> okay. Today, today I am going to present Tycoon Weaver, which allows uh, medical imaging in Nextcloud. Okay. What is Tycoon? Have you ever heard about it? No. <laughs> Did you? Oh, great. Maybe you haven't, but you already met that guy before. If you go to a hospital to get a part of your body scanned. For example, you injured your arm and you went to a hospital and your doctor asks for MR scan of your arm. And you are, you are going to the scan room and the scanner takes your MR images of your arm. After you leave the scan room, uh, you, go, you go to the doctor's room and you are very excited to see your MR results. So the question is, how are your document images stored and transferred to the doctor's office? And how can your doctor show the image, MR images your arm in his office. Here is the magic of Dicom. Dicom, your old MR images are stored in Dicom format and <coughs> your doctor is able to view your MR results thanks to a Dicom Weaver. Here's a little background. Uh, I have been working on medical imaging software for a long time. Also, uh, I was storing my old Dicom images in Nextcloud and had to find a simple way to store and uh, weave them and demonstrate them. Of course, there are many native desktop applications to do that, but uh, installation steps are really painful. Also, uh, they are based on the platform, usually Windows, and we are restricted to a single machine and no imp impossible to weave and uh, collaborate them. Also, there are many uh, zero footprint icon weavers in the market. I'm also the core team member of the Open Heart Imaging Foundation, which develops a zero footprint icon weaver. But uh, just like other icon weavers, OIF requires a PEC server to weave images and an infrastructure to store them securely. And all icon weavers should be HIPAA compliant, and Nextcloud uh, takes care of it for us. And thank you guys. Uh, also, uh, we are working on, uh, also you may want to uh, import your uh, existing uh, DICOM images from your uh, PEC server to Nextcloud uh, for better migration. And uh, you may want to synchronize your DICOM images with Nextcloud for better migration. Uh, we are working on a solution uh, which provides this uh, with the third-party integration. Uh, Dicom Weaver uses sharing and collaboration features provided by the Nextcloud and who can use it? Uh, hospitals, clinics, radiology centers, researchers, patients, and developers. Uh, if you want to check the features of the Nextcloud, uh, uh, Dicom Weaver, you can see the a screenshot of a Dicom Weaver. You can see the toolbar on the top and series panel on the left and the main viewport shows the uh, Dicom image. Uh, you can see the all details of a DICOM file uh, and uh, you can uh, single and group viewing uh, options. Uh, next, uh, we plan to implement several features for DICOM Weaver. Uh, and thanks to all uh, supporters of the DICOM Weaver. And uh, after that, we are open to uh, collaboration and any help. 
And the last thing I have to say, own your health data and keep it yourself. Now let's see if this works. Very interesting as always. Oh. First of all, let me say thank you to everybody here, uh, because I might forget that. Uh, I and the journalism community really owes you guys and girls uh, a big thank you for all the work that you have put in into things like Nextcloud. My name is Frederick Loren. I'm uh, an investigative reporter since 25 years working for Swedish public service television. And I often work together with other uh, colleagues all over the world because the world is global and so is, must journalism be. One of the... Oh, now we have not the correct one. Okay. I'm really sorry for that. It was not the correct slide. Shit. Interesting. How? Um, okay. I have to fake it until you make it. At least it's a blank page. You have heard about Panama Papers. That was a source who came to a very reputable newspaper in Germany, Süddeutsche Zeitung. And they gave us terabytes, and Süddeutsche came to us, which are the ICIJ, the, Investigative Consor the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. We are a bunch of four, three, four hundred people all over the world who have realized that cooperation is needy if you are going to challenge big corporations and uh, tax evasion and things like that. With the data from Süddeutsche, we were 400 people who all across the globe could investigate the Chinese leading um, the party apparatus up there, showing that they really they are using offshore to store their wealth. We could show how the uh, the most famous was the, the, the Icelandic prime minister who had to resign because he had hidden stuff in offshore, uh, etc. Putin's uh, hidden millions or billions uh, were found, etc. All through collaboration and by very, very different journalists. People from Russia who are under great pressure, people from Sweden where there's a strong constitution and not really big threats to journalists, people in Africa who are under physical threat every day and economic threat, etc. We managed because we had a joint collaboration platform that we built ourselves, uh, ICIJ. But that's where we shared the documents and that's where we could pull and search in all of the Panama Papers and get them home to our computers and do our own local reporting. My challenge and why I'm thanking you guys is because I know that there are not only 400 journalists out there, there are thousands out there who have a local situation that is often terrible. It can be terrible in the sense like Swedish Public Service Television who has a contract with Microsoft. We do Office 365. That means that every investigation that Sweden does can, that we do in Sweden, can end up in an American court. It hasn't happened yet, but I, we will be there sooner or later. We can also end up in a, in, a, in a court in Britain where some oligarch decides that he doesn't like what we report on him, and then we can get sued and we will have to, to present it in court or face billions in, in uh, fines. So there are some real big challenges, and also there's a lot of simple challenges like losing your hard drive, etc., cetera, um, and having bad infrastructure. So we have implemented since 15 years uh, things like our own server, and we built it on own cloud, and then patchwork, etc. And since then, as in this last year, I have migrated to Nextcloud, and it's really fantastic, and you know why, I don't need to exp explain to you, but I think you're getting an idea of why this is important to journalists. This server is now running and is providing me with a fantastic tool, and I'm fairly advanced, uh, and it's really working well in most parts. Um, and it's also providing already Russian colleagues with a platform to work on, and that's a very difficult environment. And it's also providing an NGO already in Asia, I should say, who is under great duress. 
basically, that's what the investigative cloud is. It's just next cloud used for journalists and implementing as many as the security uh, features that you can come up with and uh, the ease of use and well let me show you why this is important this is a secret American court that never published uh, its decisions until very recently it's a decision that there will be an investigation and a search for Julian Assange's document at Google. This is the, this decision. And that's one thing. He's a sexual offender or he's a, a suspected sexual offender. Uh, you can say many things about that. But here, you also find Birgitta Jonsdottir, who is an is elected parliamentarian in a European country, Iceland. And what this secret court in America ordered Google to hand out was not only all the documents or emails in Brigitte Junstotter's account, it was also all the IP addresses that had, has ever accessed the account. And you know better than I know where those IP addresses are stored and who is now inside of a European parliamentarians, iPad, you name it. This is why this is so important, and again, thank you. Hi, my name is Galina, I'm from OneLay office, and today I hope to give you some ideas of how to make your work and documents within Nextcloud even more secure and effective. So let me briefly introduce what we are doing, what we are working on, and give you some background. So I think about 15 years ago, uh, we were fond of converters for all the file types like audio, video, images, etc., and later also documents. And our mission was to make the documents look the same and keep the formatting after conversion. On the other hand, we also had our own collaborative platform for sharing documents, and we wanted to teach this platform uh, to edit documents online, and even better, to collaborate on documents online. Uh, just to avoid this uh, downloading, uploading, to make some changes offline, etc. And the most important thing he here is to secure this process. Uh, so, um, since 2010, we are working on our online document editors, uh, which are uh, as powerful as desktop ones, but providing the uh, advantages of the online working. So, that means that you can access them from anywhere, from any device, you can share files, uh, you can co-edit the files, etc. Our core technology is HTML5 Canvas, and our internal format is docx. So we keep um, the same core for web version, um, desktop version, and mobile. And this is how we support all the uh, file, uh, all the versions we do have on our GitHub. Uh, right now, OnlyOffice has more than five million users worldwide. So let's have a look on the software itself. Uh, it has tipped interface uh, with feature-rich uh, tool set to edit your documents. Uh, you can set up fonts, styles, paragraph, uh, etc. Add some shapes, charts, uh, use content controls, and you can even extend the functionality of our editors by adding the plugins. 
As for co-editing, uh, OnlyOffice offers flexible access rights, so you can use two co-editing modes. Uh, you can review, track the changes, uh, add commands, use the built-in chat, etc. And what's important that uh, every user can choose uh, his own settings uh, without uh, being dependent on um, all the other users who are working on the same document. So, data security. It's uh, the most crucial question, I think, for all who are working with documents online. Uh, so, um, OnlyOffice is an open source solution. You can install it on your uh, servers without any access from any third party uh, companies. We are using um, JSON Web Token uh, between uh, our editors and storage of the files. Uh, limited uh, cache lifetime. You can hide download copying. Um, we have also released the watermark option. You can set it up and see uh, who has created the files and uh, who has opened it late, uh, last. Uh, we have released the end-to-end -end encryption uh, reinforced by blockchain technology, uh, which is used to store and transfer the passwords for encrypted files. And what's important, not only the files, but also the traffic, all the changes, all the temporal files, they are also encrypted. So, since we met last time, we had two huge releases. Um, we have new interface, new customization options, uh, mobile apps for integration, uh, desktop integration with Nextcloud, auto-conversion not only of the uh, formats. Uh, we work not only with the DocX, but also with all the other formats with ODF. Uh, we auto-convert them and edit them directly. Um, we have a lot of features which we plan to implement for Nextcloud Connector, like for safe or advanced sharing permissions. And this is uh, the idea, actually, how to make the uh, Nextcloud work even more secure with your documents. You can just install OnlyOffice uh, by any options. Uh, option you can find on our GitHub, like Snap, which we have just released, or Docker script, uh, Univention, or any other option. Uh, if you would like, you can also test this software without installing by our test cloud. We have, uh, again, just released it. You can uh, easily connect your next cloud uh, with the latest version of next cloud connector to our public uh, test cloud just to see how OnlyOffice works within your next cloud. So I think that's all. Thank you. So thanks, everyone. Uh, that's the end of the talks for today.